Every spring and fall when it's overseeding time, I get a lot of questions and I see a lot of questions in the forums about people worrying if their seeds are okay, have they done anything wrong, why isn't it germinating? And those are normal questions to have. I mean, you put in a lot of effort to actually seed your lawn or overseed it, then you actually wanna see something happening. And if you don't see anything happening within a week or two, then you start worrying. So today I'm gonna to show you how you can check the quality of the seeds, check the germination rate. That's at least one less thing to worry about if you actually check the seeds before you actually start. I'll also show you a bonus tip later in the video. Something I do to put my mind at ease. It's nothing complicated. I just do it every time because it helps me put my mind at ease and maybe it'll work for you too. And if it stops raining, I'm actually gonna give you a lawn update as well later in the video, show you how the lawn is looking. So hey everyone, my name is Sam and I'm an average Joe lawn nut. So why are we standing in my shed today? Because it's actually raining outside. It hasn't rained for about six, seven weeks here in Sweden, or at least in Stockholm. So that's why we're standing in the shed instead. So today we're actually testing some seeds. I'm very curious about this test because I've been wondering myself about the germination rate since I've been storing the seeds in the shed and it's not the most optimal way of storing them. And we're actually gonna use three different bags of seeds. So of course I'm gonna use the Barenbrug RPR. So my entire lawn right now is only seeded with the Barenbrug RPR. And this time around when I seeded some patches, I actually felt it took a while for it all to germinate and I didn't have as good germination I had last year. So I'm curious to see what germination rate I get from this. And this has been standing in the shed for about a year, open bag all through winter. And then we have this bag. This is from Nelson Garden. I think it's a mix of rye, uh, creeping red fescue and some Kentucky bluegrass. And this is from six years ago, I think. I think I bought it just after we moved into the house. Now, why do I have this bag still? Who the hell knows? <laughs> I have no idea. For those of you who are these kind of people who always save everything because you might need it someday, this is where it's paying off. <laughs> but I'm glad I have it because that will give us a good test. Six year old grass seeds that have been open. They haven't been stored properly at all. So I'm actually very curious to see what kind of germination rate this has. I would expect closer to zero and then we have this bag this is brand new i just bought it i haven't even moved it out to the shed yet so this is the new ryegrass i'm trying out this fall so i would assume i have the best germination rate from this because i'm assuming it has been stored properly from the vendor so just before we get going with the test i just want to walk through what makes the quality of seeds go bad and normally it's all about how you store it so let's take my shed for instance i have this thing over here it keeps track of the humidity and the temperature of the shed. And then I have the humidifier here that keeps it around 60%. And I also have a heater over here, just making sure it doesn't get too cold. Normally it doesn't stand in the corner, but there's no reason to have it right now during the summer. And normally all this is automated. So if the temperature drops below four degrees Celsius, the heater comes on. And if the humidity goes above 60%, the humidifier goes on. But this winter with the energy prices being what they are in Sweden, I had to turn all this off because it was just costing too much. So that's why I'm kind of wondering, did the Barenbrug seed actually take any damage from that? And the optimal way to store seeds, it's below 50% humidity and between four and 10 degrees Celsius, and it needs to be airtight. That's the optimal way at least. I'm pretty sure there aren't many people that can keep the optimal range for everything. So let's go ahead and collect seeds from all these bags and let's start a test. All right, so here we have the seeds. This is the newest one, the DLF Masterline Ryegrass. And here we have the Baron Brug RPR. And lastly, we have the Nelson Garden six year old grass. So what I've done is that I've taken 100 seeds of each. Now you don't need to take 100 seeds exactly. I've done that just because it's easier to calculate the germination rate. I mean, you could just take some, sprinkle it on and just guesstimate the germination rate. You can take 10 if you want, but I think that's just too small of a sample size. So that's why I wanted 100. You will also need some paper towels and plastic bags for this. And in case you're wondering why I have a shower cap in the shed, it's just because I use it to cover the handheld spreader when I'm fertilizing in the rain. It's also a fashion statement. I mean, it looks nice, doesn't it? I always use this thing whenever I'm fertilizing. I put it on the handheld spreader just to keep it dry, but it looks nuts though. Who the hell puts a shower cap when and fertilize in the rain? Who else but me? All the lawn nuts, I, I hope. All right, 
Back to the seeds. All right, what you do now is that you take a paper towel and then you need to moisten it. Make sure it's nice and moist. There you go. And then you put your seed on there. I'm gonna start with the oldest one, the Nelson Garden one, and just spread it evenly on the paper. And then you cover it up. Take a plastic bag. As you can see, I made a lot of holes in this. I'm not sure if the camera picks it up. I just took a knife and made a lot of holes because you need to make sure you let air in. Then you take this and put it in the plastic bag. Also, if you're trying out different seeds, make sure you mark it so you know which seed is which. So this one was the Nelson Garden one, NG. Now we just close the bag. So first one done. Now let's do the other ones. And this is from Danish DLF seeds. So I'm just gonna write DLF. All right, so that's it. Now you just have to wait. Now, depending on what type of seed you have, it may differ how long you have to wait for germination, but wait at least five, 10, 15 days. If you have Kentucky bluegrass, I would wait at least 12, 13 days just to make sure it has germinated, if it will. Then comes the question, what is a good germination rate? So I would say anything around 90 to 95% is a good quality seed. That's a good germination rate. You're never going to have 100%, so just forget about it. You're not going to get 100%. Unless, unless there is one way to get 100% germination, and it is scientifically proven, I promise you. If you like this video or subscribe if you haven't, I will guarantee you, you will have 100% germination rate. Anyone buying this? I guess not. <laughs> but if you wouldn't mind, just like this video, it will help me out a lot. But really, no, 100% germination just isn't possible. So aim for at least 90 to 95. That's a good germination rate. And based on improper storage, or you may not even have the possibility to store it the best way, it will lose some viability over time. That's why it's best not to store seeds. Buy what you need and use it, and then buy it the next time you want to use it. But I would say if it's anything below 50%, you might not want to use it. It may not be worth it. So the seeds are in the bags. They're on the windowsill. So now we just give it a week or two for everything to germinate. So I'll check back with you guys in a week. It actually stopped raining now, so I'm actually going to show you the lawn. For those of you who don't care, just skip this part. So it's still green, and you can see where I seeded those light green spots. Those are just the newly seeded areas I seeded this spring. I've had some iron seaweed and my usual summer cocktail on this. But since it takes about three, four months for new grass seeds to actually absorb iron, it doesn't darken up like the rest, so it just sticks out more. So you can really see exactly where I've seeded. As you can see, I've dug out all around the yard. So creating new edges was actually so annoying because they only hold for about a year. So I've dug everything out and I'm planning on putting some stone over here all around the lawn and you guys want to see something annoying that happens every single time i do anything with the yard so this is the area where the final digging was and this is where i struck through the cable <laughs> no god please no 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 look at this just this area to go and i hit the cable of course and I installed this really thick Robomore cable just so these things wouldn't happen, but they happened anyway. It's so annoying every single time this happens. I'm actually so sick and tired of that cable. <laughs> I'm really considering getting a Robomower without a cable because I still do use it sometimes. When I went to see Metallica the other weekend, I was gone for about four days and it's ryegrass. In four days, you have a forest here. So you need to have something when you're not at home. And next week I'm actually going to Scotland for a week and it needs to be mowed. I can't leave it for a week like this. So I still do want a robo mower. It's just that cable, it's getting on my nerves. Every time I wanna do anything, you wanna scarify, you wanna do something else. Every time, I think I must have run over the cable at least about 20, 30 times. And when I installed that cable, they said it's unbreakable you can't cut through it <laughs> <laughs>
and it was a normal shovel. It just cut through it really easily. That was worth. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe it's time to invest in a new robo mower, one without cables. We'll see. At least this is how the lawn is looking. It's looking far better from a distance, but still, the lawn is still looking pretty good. Especially considering what period we've had. We've had six, seven weeks without any rain. It's handling it pretty good and it's still pretty soft. And people think I water my lawn every day to keep it like this. I water it once a week, if even that. I haven't watered this lawn for about a week and a half now before the rain and it's still looking pretty good. I'm just gonna show you the front because the front was the worst part. And as you can see, it's recovered pretty good. Still have some bare spots here and there, especially over here. I'm not sure what's going on in that corner. I think it's just too little sun. The bushes block out the sun. This whole area doesn't get too much sun to begin with. So I need to figure out something with that corner. But the rest of it is looking pretty good. I'm actually building a deck in a couple of weeks. So I'm removing the stones here and seeding grass instead. I, I don't like this part. I want it to be straight over here. So there are some projects going on, but I'm happy that the lawn is green at least. The color is so nice. I love it. <laughs> All right, enough about my lawn. Now let's get back to the quality test of the seeds. So now it's time to look in the bags and see how it looks. It's been quite a few weeks. I had a vacation in between, I went to Scotland. So it's been a longer time than I had planned, but hey, that's what happens. It doesn't matter for the test though, but it's been about two, three weeks since I put them in the bags. So let's start off by checking the DLF seeds. These are the freshest ones. So let's see how they look. And this is how it looks. But as you can see on some of these, you can see that it started to germinate. It has gotten a bit of a tail, so to say. So that's all I need to know that it can actually germinate. So now let's just count these up and see how many of these actually germinated. For the DLF seed, I actually counted the ones that didn't germinate, that was easier. I found these three. These are the only three that I could find so that would mean that of 100 seeds, only three of these didn't germinate. So that's about 97%, which is very good. But I mean, this is a completely new bag of seeds. So I would expect no less, and it's a quality seed. So 97% for the DLF seeds. Now let's actually check the Baron Brug. Let's see how it did. This is the Baron Brug RPR and just straight off, just by looking at it like this without even counting, I can see that not everything has germinated. It's not looking as well as the DLF one, but let's count it anyways. All right, so I counted the barren brugs now. So it was 35 seeds that had no germination at all, which is a lot. The germination rate for the barren brug is only 65%. And to be honest, I'm actually kind of surprised. I know it wasn't stored perfectly, but still 65% is pretty low. Only a year after, I mean, it hasn't been terrible. I mean, sure, I shut off the heat and the humidifier for about a month or two. So that really means that if you buy seeds, you better use them now, otherwise they might go really bad. All right, so that's 65% germination rate for the Baron Brug. Now let's check the last one. And this is from Nelson Garden. This was the seed that I bought when I moved into the house, so about six years ago. Let's see what kind of germination rate we have on this one. Uh, it's not looking good. <laughs> I'm actually trying to find anyone that has germinated. Ah, this one. All right, so I could only find one, two, three, four, five, six of them that had actually started to germinate. So I guess this is what six years of neglect will do. So that's a germination rate of 6%, which isn't the best. <laughs> it's not the worst either. Zero would be the worst, but it's not the best. I would never use this seed. So there you have it. The freshest seed was also the best one, the DLF seed. That was a germination rate of 96%. Then we had the Baron Brug, it had about 65%. And then we have the poor forgotten Nelson Garden seed, which had a germination rate of 6%, which is not good at all. But it was a cool test to do. I do have to point one thing out though. When you do your seeding projects and you're wondering, aren't the seeds going to grow? Is there something wrong with the seeds? More often than not, it's something that we've done. 
Either we water too much or we don't water enough. Maybe it wasn't deep enough in the soil. Maybe it doesn't have enough sunlight. There's a whole bunch of reasons why the seeds don't germinate. More often than not, it's not anything with the actual seeds. But if you still want to check, just to put your mind at ease, this is how you do it. And it's really easy. You don't have to put a lot of effort into it. And there you have the test. I thought it was super awesome to just do a quick test like this. All right, so I said in the beginning, I will show you what I do to kind of put my mind at ease every time I seed. So this is what I do. It doesn't matter if I seed bare spots or if I'm doing a bigger renovation, I always use the seeds in a smaller pot indoors just because I can give this the optimal conditions indoors. And it, it just helps me put my mind at ease because this one always germinates and I see it popping up just a couple of days before I see it outside. And that always assures me that, well, if I've done everything properly, then I don't need to worry. I know it's coming in a, in a couple of days. Maybe this sounds ridiculous, but it actually helps. Just knowing that, well, it came up in the pot, so it should come up any day now outside. So if you're obsessing about your seeds every time you seed, try this out, maybe it helps. It does help me. All right, so that's how you check the quality of seeds. And if you guys wanna know how to actually renovate your entire lawn, I did a big renovation of my entire lawn using the Baron Brug RPR. It took me a lot of time and a lot of effort, but it's so satisfying once it's done. So if you wanna watch that, just go click this video and I'll see you over there.